some of you may have done the Newman stability analysis. So basically, I'm going to give you an I'm going to illustrate how to do it through an example. So I'm going to do it through an example discretization of the um, of the wave equation. So partial u partial t plus partial u partial x equal to zero. Okay, and I'm going to discretize it using a central difference in space and forward order in time. So u of n plus 1 at grid point A minus u uh, at grid point, the same grid point at time step n divided by delta t plus, because I'm using forward order, it's the spatial discretization is at step n. So ui plus 1, ui minus ui minus 1 divided by two, uh, 2 delta x would be equal to 0. Okay, moving all the known to the right-hand side and leaving only the unknown on the left-hand side. So we have this is equal to minus, or oh, is equal to plus uin over delta t minus un i plus 1 minus un i minus 1. If you are using an implicit scheme, then you have more terms on the left-hand side and less terms on the right-hand side. And uh, uh, in project two, you are going to see we can use discretization with mixed, explicit, and implicit schemes. So some of the differential operators can be discretized at step n. Some differential operators can be discretized at step n plus 1. So you move some to the left-hand side, some to the right-hand side. All right. OK. Now, if we don't consider the boundary condition, which really means if we have an infinite domain, or if we have like a periodic domain, which is effectively infinite, that means we can allow waveforms of all frequencies. In the infinite or periodic domain, we can decompose any function into summation of Fourier waves. What's special about sinusoidal waves? It's periodic. And you can see that for most of the finite difference discretizations, I mean, for actually most of the linear schemes of discretizing differential operators. Like basically all the differential operators we, we are starting are linear, right? I mean the derivatives, second derivatives, whatever, they are linear operators. If you multiply any function by a factor of A, the derivative of that function gets multiplied by the same factor. So so it makes sense for the discretizations to also be linear. And you're going to see, uh, in some cases, in finite volume, we may not exactly want the discretization to be linear. But like a von Neumann stability analysis applies to the case that the discretization is linear. So when the discretization is linear, you're going to find out the finite difference discretization when plugged into a waveform, a sinusoidal waveform, would not involve any other frequencies. So let's see how it works. So if I if I have a u n of i equal to a u hat of n, so that is the magnitude of the waveform at step n times exponential of i j k. Okay. So here the i is the index of the spatial grid. J is the square root of minus 1. And k is the frequency of the wave. OK, is it clear like, like what IGK, IJK means? OK, so if we, if we have a waveform like that of frequency k, then let's find out, let's find out what the right-hand side of this is. So first of all, we have u i of n becomes exactly u hat of n times e to the i j k divided by delta t. 
and minus, this becomes a little bit tricky because we have i plus 1 and i minus 1. So u hat of k e to the i plus 1 times jk minus u hat of n e to the i minus 1 of jk to delta x. What's interesting about these sinusoidal waves expressing complex uh, exponential is that you can expand the e to the e to the summation of something into the product of exponentials. Yes. Yeah, i is the index, j is the square root of minus one, imaginary. Yes, and k is the frequency of this particular wave. And now we can see that we can pull this u u head of n out. We can also pull this e to the i g k out. And what is left is 1 over delta t minus e to the j k minus e to the minus j k divided by 2 delta x. Is it clear what I did? Right, I pulled this e to the i j k out of this e to the i j k plus e to the j k. And e to the j k becomes over here. Same thing here, except for it's minus j k. So that means at time step n plus 1, what I get is still a waveform. So it, it, take a look at the right hand side. Anything that depends on i, that depends on where the grid is, the spatial coordinate, is still exactly a waveform except for the magnitude of the waveform is multiplied by this number. This is a number that is independent of i. OK, so that means my u hat, I can express this as u hat of n plus 1 times e to the i j k. And uh, where u hat of n plus 1 is equal to u hat of n times, the, times this multiplier a. And this is the multiplier. In the absence of boundaries, this a is the eigenvalue of this discrete operator. Because when I apply the discrete operator, both in space and time, to a sinusoidal waveform, I get exactly the same sinusoidal waveform except for a different magnitude. That's the definition of a eigenvalue and eigenvector. A is the eigenvalue, the Fourier waveform is the eigenvector. This is true for any k. In the infinite domain, this is true for any real valued A. In the periodic domain, this is true for any k for which the waveform fits that period, fits the spatial domain. All right. So that means an infinite domain has infinitely many pairs of eigenvalue eigenvectors. A finite domain has finitely many ones that are multiplies of certain integers until you the, the magnitude of the integer get to the point where uh, a sinusoidal frequency of large enough waveform became aliased back to a lower frequency wave. OK. So what we want to make sure is that the, uh, the number a has a magnitude of what? Huh? Less than 1, right, for the scheme to be stable. Now, is it the case here? Oh, sorry, I think I, uh, I, think I forgot a 1 over delta t here. So I need to multiply a delta t out. Uh, so a is, this is a over delta t. So a, my, my multiplicative factor is equal to 1 minus e to the jk minus e to the minus jk over 2 delta x. And actually we immediately see that this a is not within the unit circle. Why? Because e to the j k is equal to cosine of k plus i sine of k. 
e to the minus jk is equal to the same cosine but minus i sine of k. The, uh, the difference between them is purely imaginary. So we have 1 minus a purely imaginary number, which lies out of the complex plane. Right? If, if you have real imaginary, and this is 1, this a would be somewhere here which lies outside the unit circle. All right. So what can we say about the combination of central difference and forward order? It's unstable. No matter how accurate the truncation error is, no matter how small the truncation error is, it doesn't really work. Over time, the error accumulates and gets multiplied to bigger and bigger, and uh, it's ultimately unstable. What if you use a backward order in combination of uh, central difference? So if you use backward order, let me put a different color here. If you use backward order, this would be plus 1. This would also be plus 1, right? And uh, so instead of, instead of this being on the right-hand side, you have this on the left-hand side. Let's write it down a little bit. So back, backward order, you have u of m plus 1 i over delta t. Now in this case plus m plus one i plus one minus u m plus one i minus one is equal to u a over delta t, right? Okay. Using the same for Newman stability analysis, we are going to say okay, uh, if if you so we are going to plug in plug in u hat of n times e to the i j k into this. And uh, uh, we can we find that u of m plus one is of the same form. So u hat of m plus one times e to the i j k over delta t plus u hat of m plus one e to the i j k times e to the j k minus e to the minus j k would be equal to u hat of n over delta t e to the i j k. And in this case, we find that u hat of m plus 1 multiplied by 1 plus 2 delta x e to the i uh, e to the j k minus e to the minus j k would be equal to, oh, I think we, we also have a, we also have a delta t here. Uh, is equal to u hat of n. So the the multiplicative factor is the reciprocal of this number. If we draw in the complex plane, okay, so this is one, this is unit circle, and again, this is a purely imaginary number, right? So we go up somewhere here. But the reciprocal lies somewhere over here. So is it stable? It is stable as long as it is stable as long as this number is outside the unit circle, which always is. Right? So a central difference combined with backward order is always stable. Yes? 